Hi there, I'm Angus from angusdriving.co.uk Going to have a look at another test shoot that's commonly used in the Curry area of Edinburgh The weather at the moment looks okay uh, there's, There are clouds in the sky so I'm hoping it doesn't rain as I start to film it But yeah, we'll give it our best shot Let's get into it and see what happens on the road today So as we start here, I'm just across from the test centre. I'm going to turn right at the end of the road here. So I'm going to interior mirror, right door mirror, signal right. With this Lorna car that's parked, I'm going to make sure I get back to my side of the road before turning right, just to make sure that I'm on my side of the road so that if someone wants to turn into this junction, they can do so. Looking both ways, quite busy. There's a few things coming along there, but they're being held up after this DPD van that's going in here. He's letting me go, so off I go. I just wanted to check. I hear right away over me, but that was letting me go. Now, before I head up here, I'm going to check my mirrors. I'm just going to edge into this area to have a look up the hill. It looks okay, so I'm just checking as I go back out. Because the road continues to curve around to the left, I'm just trying to stay left when I can to give myself the best view up the road, just so I'm not committing into anything without a plan. And then it looks okay, so I'm continuing on up. Now this is something they might do at the beginning of the test. On this occasion, not worrying about the driveways, if you could stop on the left just after the speed bump. So I'm going to do interior mirror, left door mirror, signal left. I'm bringing the front corner in over towards the kerb, then I'm just steering it away so that I don't go onto the pavement and I'm stopping. So because they said don't worry about the driveways on this occasion, then that's fine on this occasion to stop over the driveways. Drive on when you're ready. So all they're looking for here is a bit of a hill start. Are you able to pull away without you know losing control of the car? It's not going to go backwards. So a lot of people sometimes when they're nervous, you know they've just left the test centre. This could be in the first you know 20 seconds of their test. Um, the sort of thing they might do is they might try and pull away in the gear they're already in. So maybe try to pull away in second gear, or maybe maybe even worse, maybe not even in a gear, and then the car doesn't even have anything holding them on the hill, so they fall back. So I'm just going to take my time, clutch into first gear, looking ahead. It looks okay. Mirrors looks okay, so I'm going to start to get my feet ready. I'm going to give it plenty of accelerator because it is a, a hill, so I'm going to push the accelerator till I hear it sort of turn over, bringing the clutch just to that biting point, checking mirror, mirror, and my right shoulder to check nothing's happening in these driveways. It all looks good, so I'm going to signal, release my handbrake, then gently start to guide the clutch up, making sure that I just keep the accelerator gently on there. Um, especially if you're nervous, just making sure you give it enough accelerator there, just just so that you know that will uh, make uh, the car uh, be able to do what you're asking. I'm checking mirrors before I come back, just after that van. At the end of the road up here, I'm going to turn to the left. The car coming in, all the parked cars are on its side, so it should probably give way to me. It might squeeze through gently. I'm just going to sort of stay over beside the kerb and we can get through together. And then I'm going to turn left, so a mirror mirror signal. It also changes into 30 there. Before the kerb curves, light braking, clutch into first, rolling around, getting the same angle as the kerb as I roll up. There's a van coming down with a car behind it, so I'm just going to pause for a moment. And because it's a slight uphill, I'm going to put my handbrake on because there's a few things coming. If it was just like sort of uh, the van, uh, the van's turned in, but if it was just a few things, I might hold the biting point. It looks okay, setting my accelerator, finding the biting point, and then releasing my handbrake, and off I go. And then wanting to quite efficiently start to build my speed back up to uh, 30 here. Um, so that uh, I'm fitting in with the traffic. So if just after I've pulled out of there, if someone starts to come down the road, then uh, yeah, I clear it and I'm away. And then driving down here, just looking for the next thing that might interrupt me. At the moment, it's looking quite good. Uh, the cars are all quite loosely spaced out. I've got a pedestrian crossing here. I don't see anyone at either side. I've got people at the bus stop on the right, so a bus is due coming towards me. Um, and no one's looking to pull out of that petrol station. The next thing that could happen is a vehicle in front could turn into the petrol station. No one's signalling in. Uh, of course, if I saw a signal on the vehicle turning right there, I would start by checking my mirror to update the current situation behind me, see what's going on. And then because there's no one coming towards us there, I'd expect them just to be able to turn into the petrol station. So I would just, uh, I'd probably just adjust my power and that would be enough. Traffic lights have been green for a while. I'm going to check my mirror. I'm just going to let go of my accelerator just now. I get to a point here where I think if even if they did change, I would, uh, would just keep on going. So at that point, I just gently accelerate to pull through. The, uh, looking further down the road here, it looks like it's getting a bit busier, like sort of bunching up with parked things on the other side. There's a van and stuff parked on the right, which could make the road narrow, especially if there's a big vehicle coming. So I'm going to check my mirror. Van behind's got a really good gap with me. I'm just coming off the power and I'm looking in. The pedestrian crossing has just changed to red down there. So I know that's going to slow me. It might be green by the time I get there. I'm just sort of uh, coming down, staying off the power. I've got this car that's potentially going to pull out in front of me, but that's okay. Checking my mirror again before I start my braking. And if I brake gently, that's it going green. 
Now, depending on how efficient these guys are, I think I'm just going to be able to go into second gear in this case and then just bring my clutch up and then just tag on the back. If the queue was longer or they were just a wee bit um, slower at getting going, then I might just go into first gear. I'm intentionally keeping a gap here so I don't have to pay as much attention to the guy in front. I'm going to check interior mirror, right door mirror as I go out, and that means that my view is not blocked, I can see down the road. The van camper van there's got enough room with the curb. I ideally want to be at doors width off these cars if I can. Once I've cleared this white van, I'm going to check interior mirror, left door mirror. All I'm looking for is, before I start to take the line back across, is it okay? Have I cleared the van? The van's not pulling away, that sort of thing. Nobody's at that crossing, so that shouldn't change. Further down, got a line of parked cars and an Amazon van at the end, so I'm looking for the Amazon, uh, like the driver, potentially coming out of houses on the right. I'm trying to keep a line off them, at least the doors, but these cars have enough room that I can sit here without obstructing them. And then I'm going to check interior mirror, left door mirrors to check that I've cleared the van. As you drive along here, find a safe place on the left to pull up and stop. So mirror, mirror signal, I'm looking along, don't want to stop in the bus stop, but anywhere, excluding sort of stopping over a driveway, anywhere along here I can bring it in beside the, the curb. So you're going to get that about four or five times during the test, find a safe place to pull up and stop on the left. What you're looking for is somewhere on the left that's, uh, that you could leave the car for the day. So not opposite a parked car, not opposite a road, like a junction. Um, so basically don't have something that's going to narrow the road. You can be opposite driveways, because I think in some of these places it's going to be very difficult not to be opposite uh, a driveway. Drive on when you're ready. So clutch into first, checking mirror, mirror, right shoulder. All looks good, so I'm going to do a wee signal and then release my handbrake and off I go. So the Amazon van is back ahead of me, it's braking, so it could be potentially looking for an address here. So I'm going to start to take a line out towards the line, uh, the, towards the, the middle of the road, so checking mirror, mirror, and I'm out here to have a look past. It looks okay for me to go past, and it also looks like I can include a doors width off the van. I'm then going to check interior mirror, left door mirror before coming back in, and the crossing looks good, no one's at either side, so that shouldn't change. And I'm just efficiently, I'm back up towards 30 at the moment. And at the moment, it's looking good ahead. Now there's a small white parked car down there on the left, and uh, that's going to make the road narrow and it's going to be my problem. So I'm going to check interior mirror, right door mirror as I position out towards the centre of the road to have a look. And I'm just going to brake gently because it's, it's a wee bit narrower here and I'm going to go down into second gear and I will be able to go through but the reason I'm going slower is because I'm going to be a wee bit closer to that car due to the traffic that was coming towards me. Of course if the traffic wasn't there coming towards me I could take a slightly wider line making sure that I had um, a doors width off. Now I'm going to turn right to the traffic lights, so interior mirror, right door mirror, signal right and I'm braking gently and then as I get down to the, towards the cycle box, clutch down into first and I'm going to stop just before this cycle box. When the traffic lights go green here, in addition to the green circle, I'm going to get a green arrow as well pointing to the right. That would mean that I am able just to turn, where if you were at crossroads and you didn't get the green arrow and you only got a green circle, like a green light, that's when you'd have to go forwards and give way to the oncoming traffic. So I'm going to do accelerate from the biting point, checking my door mirrors there just to see if there's any cyclists or motorbikes or anything coming down the side of me. Um, you can see the green arrow on the, the light there, so round I go. As I go down here, there's vans on the right there which will push traffic out onto my side of the road, so I'm just checking my mirror, it looks okay. What I'm looking for there, imagine, imagine that taxi's on its way through there. There's nothing I can really do. Um, it's not necessarily the taxi's fault, um, because if I wasn't in its view as it made the decision, then uh, yeah, it's just difficult. So I would have to react to it, but the minute you see something on the other side of the road and the road disappears, you're almost expecting that there, there will be someone uh, coming towards you. And then hopefully, hopefully, if you're lucky, there's not. I'm just keeping a regular eye on my speed as I go down the hill here, checking that I don't go over 30 um, because it's quite downhill, it doesn't take too much to sort of, uh, you know, like I'm basically not, not accelerating now and the car's sitting at 29 so that's fine. As the road disappears, updating my mirror check again because I don't know the traffic could be queuing around the corner. It looks okay. I also know that the person isn't too close behind me. If when I looked in my mirror, the car behind me was quite close, then I might go around the corner a little bit slower. As I move out for these cars, I'm checking mirror, mirror. I also see the speed limit changes down to 20. So I brake down to 20. The corner's about 90 degrees. I'm going to go into second gear. As I'm braking, I bring the clutch up and I've brought the clutch up and I'm still above the brake as I go around the corner and it looks okay. So I'm just being careful that I don't go over 20 as I go over this bridge. Sign up there tells me there's a junction on the left which potentially could be someday pulling out of that as I go around the corner. So as I approach I'm going to check my interior mirror and I'm just looking, no one's there. 
Now we've got a line of parked cars with all these shops and stuff, so you will have traffic, people coming and going from these cars. So I'm going to try and get the doors width off them if I can. So I'm kind of ignoring this sort of line of this, the white line and getting my doors width off. Then after this, I'm going to check mirror, mirror as I come back across. The crossing ahead looks okay. No one's at either side, so that's not going to change. And the traffic's beginning to queue up. So I'm checking my mirror and I'm coming off the power. I'm going to do light braking, clutch down into first. Now as I roll forwards, it looks like we're going to be completely stationary just now. So I'm going to come to a stop, making sure I can still see the road between me and the vehicle in front, and I'm going to put the handbrake on. And this is quite a hill start going up through Collington here. So again, just like we had at the beginning, making sure you've got enough accelerator on um, while you're finding that biting point so that there's enough fuel available for the car to pull up this, uh, this hill. So let's see, the traffic lights have gone green, I can see the things beginning to move, so I'm going to do accelerator, clutch the bike, I'm going to check both door mirrors to see if there's anything that's changed, like motorbike cyclist, looks okay, when the guy in front starts to move, I'm going to release my handbrake and then I start to drive. And it's been green for a while now by the time I get up here, so I'm anticipating that it might change to red. And it seems to be staying green, so off I go, that's good. Now, further up here, making sure I don't go over 20, it goes back into a 30 just here, and then just after this line of parked cars, I'm going to turn right. So just after that silver car with the refract, so I'm going to do mirror, mirror signal. The middle of the road is very faded, but I've got to estimate where I think the middle of the road is. I'm up neat to that. Looking ahead, there's a van coming into that junction, so I'm going to have to give way to that. So I'm doing braking, clutching into first, and I think I'll get over before that mini, so I'm just going to turn in and then it, it, into this road. It's then back into a 20 here, very narrow, so I'm checking mirror, mirror, and I'm going to pop myself in the middle because I can see up the road that no one's coming towards me. Lots of uh, parked cars, so lots of blind areas. In between some of these parked cars, there's driveways, we've got the fish van here. You might have people coming and going to the fish van, which of course, that fish van, because it's a big vehicle, is going to create a huge blind spot on the, on the side of it. So I'm making sure I don't go over 20, and I'm just making my way up the road. I've got a slightly bigger area after this van, so I could return back to my side of the road slightly here, so I could check interior mirror, left door mirror, just as I come back over. Up here, a bit faded, uh, the road markings here, I'm checking mirror, mirror, just to move out for this car. We're going to continue straight on, you're always going straight on in your driving test, unless the examiner says otherwise, but yeah, this is a giveaway. So I'm going to check my mirror, I'm going to do gentle braking, clutch down to one, I'm braking enough it won't go out to the junction, I'm letting go of the brake for a stop, setting my accelerator, bringing my clutch to the biting point, and using that to edge forwards. Now the road curves quite tightly into left, so it's hard to see there, and I've got a line of parked cars here, I know you can't see that on the camera, and I'm just edging forwards to where I can see. There's cars coming both ways at the moment, but potentially after this person it looks okay. Keeping my accelerator nice and healthy, lifting the clutch up. Find a safe place on the left to pull up and stop. So mirror, mirror signal, bringing myself in, I'm going to go just past this driveway, and then just stop clear of the driveway. So unless they have said, don't, unless they have said, uh, don't worry about the driveway, then make sure you worry about the driveway. So, when you're ready, leave here, turning left at the end of the road. So, accelerate in the biting point, mirror, mirror, right shoulder, all looks good. So, I'm going to do a wee signal and then release my handbrake. As we go up here, I'm going to turn left at the road end. So, mirror, mirror, signal, and then it's uphill. I'm going to do light braking, clutch down, and then I've braked enough, it's not going to go out. So, before it rolls back, accelerator and the biting point. The reason I don't want to brake all the way to zero is if I brake all the way to zero, then let go of the brake, I won't have time to get the biting point. The car will start to fall backwards. Now, this car looks like it's stopped, looks like there's people in it because it's got the brake lights on. So, I'm going to check mirror, mirror, and again, I'm anticipating it could move. Someone could open a door. So, I've got the doors width off it before returning mirror, mirror. Now, as the road curves around, I've got a parked van on my side I don't want to go out for the van too early I'm going to stay left to try and look past it for what I can see it looks okay so mirrors and that gives me the best opportunity to look through there and then mirror mirror as I come back looking into this section quite parked up lots of parked vehicles looking into it I don't see any movement from anyone so I'm going to continue into this uh, area and then I'm going to check mirror mirror just as I move out Again, trying to stay a doors width off these vehicles, looking sort of down between the cars and the pavement to see what, to do my best to see ahead, checking mirror, mirror, to see if there's any movement. Now, down here, we're going to turn left, and then we come to a road end, we're going to turn right. So, mirror, mirror, signal. And then, sometimes there can be parked cars here as you come in, so I'm staying in behind the parked car, looking past it, it looks okay, so I'm now going to widen, I'm going to turn right at the end, mirror, mirror, signal. Braking so I won't go out, clutch it into one, 
I let go of the brake now, the car still rolls forwards but it wouldn't go out, before it rolls back, accelerator, biting point. Using that clutch control, keeping the accelerator steady, I can edge forwards to where I can see both ways. Now, it looks okay to my right, there's a, a bus further up the road, there's a learn of car going past here, but after that it looks okay, so keeping my accelerator steady, I'm lifting my clutch, and away I go. And then, let's see, they could get you to pull in up here, ideally, they, there's obviously so many parked cars here, so they wouldn't do it at the moment, because there's nowhere that's not opposite the parked car, so they might do it further up the road, but they wouldn't do it at the moment. Okay. So continuing up, just making sure I'm not going over 30 and sort of looking for the next thing that might interrupt me, it all looks quite good. Now up ahead we come to a roundabout and we're going to be turning right at the roundabout second exit. If you're following a sat-nav in your uh, test, the sat-nav here calls this roundabout straight on second exit, but it's right. So I'm checking my mirrors as I go out. So we're following for the city bypass, which is clearly a right turn on that uh, sign. So turning right, second exit, mirror, mirror, signal. So make sure if you're following a sat-nav, the examiner might say something along the lines of, have a look at where the, the second exit is. Or they might say, sort of, you know, you know, like look at the blue line on your on your sat-nav. Although it calls it straight on, the blue line does go very uh, tightly to the right. So I've made sure I've stayed back from this learner. I can still see road between uh, myself and the learner. I'm going to set my excel to guide the clutch to the bite. Looks okay for myself to go as well. So I'm going to the roundabout as I go. And then when I leave here, I want to leave in the left lane. So mirror, mirror, signal, and across to that left lane. This bit here looks a bit like a racetrack. Just got to watch so you don't go over 30. Um, it's a common place that people do go over 30. Normally it's more when they're coming down the hill after being on the bypass. But it could happen as you go up the hill because a lot of the traffic around you will uh, tend to accelerate and go like a lot faster than uh, the speed limit. So it's a shame if you followed them and then went over, it'd be a shame. Up here we're going to turn right at the roundabout third exit where we're going to go into the car park and we'll see if we can reverse into space. So, right third exit, mirror, mirror, signal. I'm braking, I'm just keeping back from this learner enough. It looks okay, so I'm going to try second gear, clutch up, and I'm going to stay with the roundabout as I go. I'm going to steer around, and as I leave here, I'm going to do interior mirror, left door mirror, signal left. Now, I've got to be careful here, I'm going to be quite efficient to get my signal off, because I'm going to follow around here, but yeah, if the signal stays on a wee bit too early, too long, then it looks like you're going into the pet station. Turning left into the car park, mirror, mirror, signal, horribly tight car park, I'm going to slow down, I'm going to first gear before I go in, so the car is nice and settled. So I'm going to look to go, uh, look to reverse into a space of our choice in the car park. The car park is one way, uh, the car park follows around to the left here, so I'm just going to uh, follow around with the, the one-way system. Because the road markings are very faded, the examiner will tell you that, so um, the uh, yeah, like uh, they'll, they'll keep you right. If, of course, the road markings get repainted, then uh, then yeah, you might have to respond to, well, you'd have to be expected to see that and respond uh, accordingly. So I'm going to try going down to the left here. It's normally quite busy, sorry, it's normally quite quiet around here, so I'm going to do a wee signal where the bit we were in can be quite busy. So I've got lots of bays here on the right. There's no one behind me. I'm just going to stop for a moment and I'll explain what I'm going to do. So I'm going to end up reversing into one of these spaces on the right. Um, one of the mistakes I find that people do is they sometimes put themselves really close to the space before they do it. Um, so you want to have a little bit of manoeuvring room before doing it. You also don't want to be so far away from it that when you reverse uh, that way and swing round that the front of the car doesn't go too close to like the bushes and stuff here. So I'm just going to go sort of um, leaving about the sort of, I don't know, the width of a car or something between me and these spaces. And I'm going to drive along and uh, I've got lots of empty spaces here. So if I go along and line up one of the lines that comes out from the space in line with my gear stick, if at that point when I go, if I do all of my steering to the right, I should skip two spaces and be on track to go into the third space. Now it's not guaranteed that I'm going to go into the third space, in fact I would say but it's very likely we're going to have to do some adjustive steering to, to get in. But I think by, by lining up with one of these lines with the gear stick and doing all of my steering, I should be on track to get about 95% of my car into the space. So let's give this a go. Um, the only thing you'd have to think about is uh, if you were doing it, like in this case, all these spaces are empty. So it doesn't really matter uh, within reason which line I choose because they're all empty. But if there was an individual car here, I'd have to check that the line I was choosing didn't take me into the same space that that car was. So from the line that you choose, you're going to skip two spaces and you'll go into space number three. 
so you'll go past three lines. Okay, okay, so let's give us a go. So we're going to go into reverse. I'm already beside the, the like, in line on these lines with my gear stick. Getting the feet ready, lightly on the accelerator, clutch the biting point. The main thing with the maneuvers, checking before you go. So checking both shoulders. All is good, no activity for anyone. So I'm going to start to go back and I'm just going to do all of my steering to the right to begin with. So as I'm going back, I'm sort of checking around. And as the car starts to rotate here, I'm going to look in this right door mirror and I will start to see the space that I'm heading into. And it looks like it's on track at the moment. So I'm checking shoulder, shoulder, and I'm just going very, very slowly. So I've got time to do these checks and keep an eye on the maneuver. So it's coming around quite the thing. I can still see this, the, the line of the space on this mirror. If I fe felt like the right corner of my car was getting too tight, too close to the right side of the space, then by undoing some of the steering, that will move my car across the way, which should then put me on track to sort of, you know, go more central in the space. So yeah, let's keep going. So checking shoulder, shoulder, still looking okay. As I come round, it's beginning, it's going in, but it's a little bit tighter to that side. So I'm going to undo some of the steering. That's going to widen me. Now, when I'm saying some of it, that was a, that was about a half turn. No, it wasn't a half turn. It was a, yeah, no, it was a, yeah, it was just under a half turn. So it's not a huge amount. So I'm checking shoulder, shoulder. And it's still okay here, I can see the line here, and the line is beginning to come into sight on that side. So now, in a good way, I've got two points that I can use to sort of help me. Rather than just doing everything by rotating around one point, I have the, the line on the left, I can now see how I'm getting on. And it's on track, so I just keep checking shoulder, shoulder, right through the middle of the car, check no one is like walking behind me. And it's completely on track, I'm quite happy with that. So the next thing I'm looking for is the car is going to rotate round to an angle that the line on each side, both sides, is going to run completely straight and parallel with the car. When I get that, I'm going to go look back to straight to that point. So I'm going back slowly, checking my shoulders, and I'm about to get to that point about now, so I'm just going to loop to straight, and then I just come back slowly at that angle, and that is completely central in the space. So I'm looking good, just going back slowly, and then I'm going back until I feel like the the if I close these spaces at the front, I know you can't see this in the camera, but if, um, I'm going back until it feels like the line that closes it meets underneath my door mirror. So if I go back slightly, and that feels like it now, that's me in the space, um, but I've not, uh, I'm not going out the back. And that's, yeah, I'm very happy with that. And then uh, when I went straight, when I was a wee bit further forwards there, I could clearly see the space, the lines in my mirrors running up, like sort of parallel with the car. So. I suppose, although I've lost sight on that side of the, the space now, the last time I saw it, it was running parallel, I was running straight, so there's no reason why I should suddenly be out on that side. So yeah, I'm very happy with that. If you weren't happy with it, you can go forwards and then back to, to like adjust it. Again, make sure you check before you go forwards, and then before you go backwards, make sure you're still checking as you go back. That's the main reason people fail. Normally they just lose, uh, they just sort of get a wee bit, um, uh, like uh, flustered and they just drop all observations where really if it goes wrong it doesn't matter that much just take your time fixing it so while there's no one here I'll quickly demonstrate how you could fix it and what I'll do I'll make it even more extreme I'm going to sidestep from here into that space there okay so if I went into first gear to go over there I'm going to go forwards I'm going to do steering that way and then steering that way now ideally when I'm going forwards out there when I do my steering that way then that way I can use my door mirrors to get that space to line up behind me so let's give that a go so I'm looking there's no one sort of walking through the car park and then so as I go forwards I'm doing quite big steering to start to get my car over and then as I go out here I'm starting to twist the car round the way now as I'm doing this I'm looking in my door mirrors to get the space behind me I can see the line on the right but I can't see it on the left yet if I rotate further around I'll start to see it on the left here and if I go to there and then go straight I have the space almost like it's behind me I'm, I'm a tiny bit of an angle but if I go back straight to that and then just at the very end just do a little bit of steering to the right I can end up in that space so I go into reverse before going backwards checking both shoulders so shoulder shoulder all looks good that's taking me completely into the entrance of the space I'm just checking as I go back and as I get farther into the space, I'm quite happy. I'm just going to do a little bit of steering just to make the car flick around so it's nice and parallel. At that point, straight my wheels. I can still see the lines on both sides just. So if I stay straight at that, I'll end up in that space. So I'm just checking my shoulders as I go back. 
and that would be me. Now your adjustment would never be that big in regards to the correction, you know, you wouldn't be 100% out of the space, you might be slightly out of the space to the left or right, but it would be the same theory, it just wouldn't have, it wouldn't be even as difficult, it would just be like a, a slight movement to the left or right as you did it. Okay, so I'm going to leave here, I'm going to um, uh, head from here onto the bypass and then we'll, we'll complete this test route. So when, when I'm ready, I'm going to leave the space, leave the car park. So I'm looking around, all looks good, and off I go. I've got a lorry driver over here watching me, one wondering what I'm doing, speaking to myself in the car. <laughs> and judging my parking, probably thinking I might be, yeah, try, 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 try driving his big lorry. So as I go around here, I'm just taking my time, looking through the car park, any sort of movement that I need to be wary of. It looks okay just going through here slowly. I'm just staying in first gear and just making my way through. This guy's parking there, but that's all okay. Um, this van's creating a bit of a blind spot on the other side, so things could start to reverse or drive from the other side of that, but it looks okay. I've got enough of a line away from it. And I'm just making my way out of here slowly at the end of the road, turning right. So interior mirror, right door mirror, signal right. I'm nice and neat with this line as I come up. I'm doing light braking clutch down. I'm already in first. I'm happy this way. Looking up here, no one's coming into this housing estate, so away I go quite a common one that people don't look to the left there properly and uh, yeah sort of pull out without fully looking to see if anyone's there. At the roundabout turning right third exit so interior mirror right door mirror signal right as I come down here I'm taking my time it all looks quite good actually there's one guy's come off the slip road in regards to looking to your right here be careful of the people who have come off the slip road there they'll still be signaling left from exiting the slip road so like them so you don't want to trust their signal if they come off from there because the the car will still be turning uh, so on the mirror mirror signal so if they come out of that slip road there and they're going they'll have signaled left to come out of that slip road and uh, their signal will remain on all the way up to the roundabout and if they're going straight on just as they get to the roundabout it will click off now the road just follows around to the right I'm just sort of focusing to the outside of the corner here and then we're going to be building our speed appropriately to join onto the bypass. So I'm looking to match the speed of the traffic that's on the bypass. I'm using second gear to propel quite a lot of speed. I'm then going into third and I'm already around about the same sort of speed as this traffic. As I approach, I'm going to do interior mirror, right door mirror, signal right and I'm going to have a quick look around. I'm going to aim the car and a glance around. There's nobody here in this area beside me so that's all okay. Double checking it, I'm all good. I'm just going to just merge on gently. If there was someone there, I would just ease off my power, let whatever was there pass, it would just drive past and then I would merge on behind it. We're going to be on this road for about two miles, coming off at the next exit. Now, it looks fairly busy, I'm just going to sort of assess if I need to overtake or not. Um, like, uh, the if you don't think there's like going to be that much of a difference overtaking, then it doesn't really matter. It looks like, like the guy in front, he's not quite going fast, uh, but there's a lorry and stuff up ahead. Maybe I will overtake this guy if I get an opportunity. I'm just looking behind, there's like a few things coming up. Um, and then I'm going to go after this, there's a mini coming up. So I'm going to do mirrors and signal. I'm going to wait for this mini to go past. And then I'm just going to sort of double check, it's all good, yeah. And I'm just going to merge out behind this mini and accelerate. If this guy wasn't just doing 50 and was keeping up, then I'd be quite happy uh, sitting behind them. But they're not quite keeping up with the flow. Further ahead, it's beginning to bunch up slightly and it's not going to be too long till I'm coming off. So I'm going to come back in when I can see the front of that pickup in this mirror. I'm going to do mirror, mirror signal and then bring myself back over. By waiting until I can see the front of that pickup in this mirror, that means that it's um, properly behind me. So I'm not just cutting straight over the front of it. Now, it's not going to be too long until I'm coming off, um, so I'm sort of looking ahead to see for the, the sign. You'll have a sign to say the exit's half a mile away soon. Quite windy today, I can feel the, the wind on the car. Um, so here's the uh, uh, sign to say the exit is half a mile away. Traffic ahead's beginning to sort of break side of where the car is, and the things are bunching up side. So I'm just checking my mirror, coming off the power, the van, the car, the head's breaking. So I'm just breaking like this to maintain this gap between myself and the vehicle in front. With the road conditions being dry, I want to have at least two seconds of following distance. Here's my three stripes. So at this point, I'm going to start my routine of mirror, mirror, signal. I don't slow down to come off unless the traffic ahead slows down. If the road conditions were wet, my following distance would double to four seconds, and the bypass is a really common place that people get that wrong. So after coming off, I'm going to turn right at the bottom of the slip road. So mirror, mirror, signal to the, the right one, some sort of off. I wait, 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 wait to uh, enter the slip road enough before you click the signal on. Um, and then I'm going to stay to the right, treating this tar line like a, a lane as I come down, and I'm keeping this right signal on as I come down. Because it's one way, you're staying to the right as you come down here. Now, 
I wouldn't curve round for turning right because I think that then makes your, your view along that way difficult. I would just keep the, the car quite straight here um, like uh, so that you so your view along there is quite open. So I'm looking that way, looks good. This way looks good. It's a car in a distance, but I'll be able to cross the road before it gets here uh, without interrupting it. Along here at the roundabout, we're going to turn left, first exit. So as I approach, mirror, mirror, signal. Quite blind with all these trees. I'm in second. I'm going to be braking. I'm ready with the clutch, but I'm not pushing it unless I need to stop. And I'm quite happy with what I see. So I'm going to lightly accelerate. Following this curve, looking up there, there's a 40 miles an hour sign. So this road is 40. It's not very well marked, this road, um, with the, the signs, uh, the, the repeater signs for the 40. So it'd be uh, brilliant if you notice that, because you'll notice now there should be a 40 on every fourth lamppost. If you were unsure, then yeah, if you did 30, no problem. Down here, the traffic lights are red. I'm going to check my mirror. I'm going to come off my power. I'm going to start to brake. And I'm just braking smoothly. And I want to be stopping so I can still see road between me and the vehicle in front. So I'm braking, clutch down, into first. And I can still see a bit of road between myself and the van. That also means I can still see the traffic light and stuff. And then it's going to start to go. Checking my door mirrors to see if any, any like activity is happening that I need to know about on the left or right. And off I go. So it's green for going straight on. If I was turning right there, it's red. I've got a video uh, about that. Uh, that's a common place that people go wrong. Now down here, the road markings are completely done. Like they're all right here where they resurface the road. Then they go off faded. The examiner will say something along the lines of just stay left. Don't worry about the remains of these road markings. If you just sort of honour the cycle lane, that would be great. So uh, so yeah, there are. There was a hatch area here many years ago, um, but. I think now, because it's like it's really difficult to actually see where it starts and ends, but I think if you stay out of that, what happens is sometimes the traffic sort of behind you, not meaning it, might start to come up sort of in your left. It'll get a bit tricky. So if you can just sort of at the moment, just drive through that. Of course, that might change. If they come and repaint that and that hatched area is clear, then of course you would check mirrors and you would like uh, filter around it. It's been poorly marked for a number of years now, like a long time now. So um, yeah, the examiner will say something along the lines of, don't worry about those road markings or just stay, stay left uh, for now, not worrying. So yeah, that's what you'd be expecting. So again, I've got that gap between me and the van. I can see the road and I can also see the traffic light and stuff at the moment. And yeah, it's red at the moment. So I'm just I'm sitting and waiting, waiting until it goes. Now at this time of day, we're, uh, we're just after lunchtime. So bus lanes, they are not in action because shortly down the road, we're going to be going onto a road that has bus lanes. So that's it going green, accelerating the bike, checking, checking the mirrors, no one's coming down either side because a cyclist could easily catch up with us with us being interrupted by the traffic light there. And I'm continuing through. I've then got another set of traffic lights which obviously could, could change, so they're green at the moment. And I'm just easing off the, the buses, creating a bit of a blind area there as well, just in case there's anyone, you can imagine a school child or something running across. 40 miles an hour repeater sign on the lamppost there, so I'm happy just to continue along at 40. So yeah, so as I was saying, the bus lanes are not in action and uh, out of the seven driving tests they do a day, um, five out of the seven, you're just driving straight through the bus lanes. So the bus lanes are only in operation during rush hour. So between um, 7.30 and 9.30 in the morning and then four o'clock and 6.30 at night. I'm going to turn left, first exit at the roundabout up here. So I'm going to do interior mirror, left door mirror, signal left. And I'm just starting to brake gently as I come up. These guys are queuing, it looks quite busy, so I'm going to, like a junction, I'm going to do brake, clutch it into one, and I'm just going to roll up, making sure I've still got that gap between myself and the van, and I'm looking. There's a big lorry coming round, and then there's a lot of stuff behind that, so I'm not expecting this guy to move quite yet. There's a gap coming up that I'd expect this van to take, but it's not going to be big enough for myself, so I can now pull forward. So I'm going to make sure I go all the way up to this line when I'm giving way, so that if somebody pulls up next to me, I can still see it. It now looks okay for me, so I'm going to accelerate and lift the clutch. I'm wary of this top of whatever it is. I'm just going to make sure I don't clutch into that. And I'm beginning to sort of chase those vehicles that I've given way to, so that if I stay with them, the new cars coming around the roundabout won't uh, catch me. I can drive through the bus lane because of the time of day, um, so really, the, it's only the first, um, it's in the morning between uh, 7.30 and 9.30 that really affects driving tests because by 4 o'clock driving tests aren't usually happening unless they're doing overtime in the, cinema, in the, in the summer. Um, the, uh, so the 8 o'clock test and the 8.57 test, you'd have to be careful with your time to see that if you were, uh, well the 8 o'clock test you wouldn't be in the bus and stop. Straight on, checking my mirror when that guy jumps lanes, braking enough to keep a, an alright distance, 
there's a keep clear in front of this uh, junction here so I'm just making sure that I don't rush onto that I know I can now clear it the crossing looks good on the left I'm going to stay off the power slightly just so the lorry goes through so I can see that side it all looks good another keep clear coming up the roundabout has gone red that's which are controlling the traffic lights I can clear that so I'm going forwards then I'm braking gently and I'm going to be going clutch down into first and making sure again I can still see a bit of road between myself and the vehicle Interesting, you might be able to see the lorry here on the, the right has gone between two lanes. You'll sometimes see that, you might have read, read, read about that in your theory test. The lorry will have done that to give itself some extra room, so it's like defensively keeping space, um, so that no one goes up either side of it. So yeah, it's not a mistake. Going straight on, following the road ahead, second exit. So I'm going to really stay left, as if I'm going on to the bypass, and coming around with the kerb here, then on to the kerb, like like on with the kerb, uh, on the bridge, not, not onto the kerb. <laughs> um, so yeah, staying on the left, coming round, now going towards those railings and then for leaving I'm going to do mirror, mirror, signal. I've got another uh, sign saying there's a bus lane coming up but at this time of day I'm okay so I'm going to accelerate smoothly, building back up quite efficiently back to 40 and just driving along. I'm uh, looking ahead, it's looking good. These guys shouldn't go past that learner on the inside but in the learner, unless they're turning right, shouldn't be sitting out in the right for no reason. So I'm going to turn left along here and we're going to do mirror, mirror, signal. This roundabout's the one that's got like a, a lane that skips the uh, the roundabout. So um, I don't have to give way to anyone. There's a wee hatched area there that I follow but don't go into and I just go round this corner at a speed that feels comfortable. I'm not sort of flying around. We're almost back. So yeah, if you've managed that so far, you're doing well. If you're enjoying these videos, then it'd be brilliant if you could let me know in the comments if you're using them. And then we're going to go straight on, fall on the road ahead. So we're going to check the mirror, come off the power, start to brake. I'm going to lower the speed down to 20 before it curves. Looking at the roundabout, it looks okay. I don't see anyone signaling to come around. So I'm going to go second gear. I'm just checking that Audi's peeling off. It's peeling off, so I'm going to stay on the outside of the roundabout as I go. And then when I come to leave, mirror, mirror, signal. Very easy for that roundabout to come in too fast with extra speed uh, because it, the roundabout is quite small, so um, it doesn't feel very fast. But if you can try and get the speed down to 20 before the curb curves, then that will get you all set. Straight on, fall on the road ahead of this roundabout, it's all the same. Check the mirror, come off the power, start to brake gently. So I'm loading the speed, that's me down to 20 now. Look at the roundabout, it looks good. Going into second gear, clutch up, and then I'm just going to stay on the outside of the roundabout as I go. So I'm following round, staying on the outside of the roundabout as I go round. And then once I get round here, I'm going to be leaving. So I'm going to do mirror, mirror, signal. And then I'm going to stay with this kerb as I go round. And I'm going to accelerate quite smoothly to build back up towards 40 if I'm happy with what I see, which I am. Now we're on the sort of home straight back up to the test centre. Um, so yeah, you've now just got sort of that wee fiddly bit to get back into the test centre itself, like at the car park. Um, the, uh, I should be okay going back into the car park at this point. I don't want to get in anyone's way, but I should be at this time. I'm, uh, the test should be out, so I won't be in the way. I'll be efficient. I didn't want to park there at the beginning because when I started, I was I would be at the time that people would be starting their driving tests. So I didn't want to take anybody's uh, uh, space. Um, so going up here is difficult with the sun and the shade. I'm making sure I don't go over 40. I'm looking at that left kerb from a line as I curve round. You'll also see where the kerb bulges and stuff. And then if you've been practicing this area, you might, might know that the speed limit drastically changes from 40 to 20 here. So checking the mirror, coming off the power, braking gently just to sort of ensure that I'm down to 20. I'm down to 20 by here, I'm going into second gear and then just clutch up and then I'm just continuing at 20. And I'm doing that smoothly because like, uh, yeah, a lot of the people you follow will not be wanting to drop down to 20. So for example, the car behind me, uh, yeah, it, was, it came zooming up and as I was slowing down, it was just, yeah, closing and closing. But because I checked my mirror, I was aware of it, I was gentle with my braking, so I still kept myself safe. So I am just about done and continuing on up. When I get up to the roundabout up here, I'm going to turn left, first exit. I've got to make sure that my, my signal's not too early with the, uh, there's, a, well, there's a road here, but there's a, a road, it's a one-way street, but uh, I'm going to wait till I'm in the middle or past it before I signal left. So I'm just making my way over these speed bumps, making sure I don't go over 20, which feels very slow after being on those fast roads. So I'm going to go left, first exit of the roundabout here when I'm in the middle of this, I'm going to do interior mirror, left door mirror, signal left. And then as I get nearer here, I'm just going to let go of the accelerator. I'm aware of this pedestrian that's standing in the middle of the roundabout, wondering where they're going to go. They're staying there. There's a van. I'm going to go down into first. I'm going to give way to that. Because it's uphill, I'm going to do the accelerator in the bite. This guy seems to be staying on the roundabout, so that's okay. Uh, but I'm ready for him to potentially cross in front of me. Coming into here, final bit. I've got a line of parked cars here. There's a, a car in the distance that's 
about to come through. It's not on its way yet. I think I can get through without causing it any problems. And I'm going to turn left into here. So mirror, mirror signal. Horrible bit here. I'm going to slow down and I'm going to go into first gear. And then with this guy crossing, I'm just going to pause for a second. Um, and then once he's off, I'm going to continue on. So with him about to cross at the crossing point, you'd have to give way to him. Of course, he might not take you up on that offer. Um, but yeah, just uh, like uh, you would give him the opportunity. And then I'm watching this learner and I'm going to be turning left into the test centre car park here. So mirror, mirror signal. And I'm just in first gear. I'm just making my way through here. Very uh, difficult. I'm just having a look into here before we go in. Sometimes down the side of the, sh the shops here and stuff with the, the co-op and the, the units at the back there, sometimes you can get like, uh, traffic um, coming back from those units. So I'm just going forwards and towards the fence here and then I'm just going to stop here and then that would be another test route done. So I'm just going to put the car off. So yeah, um, if you find the video helpful, it would be amazing to sort of uh, to comment, to let me know. Uh, and if you've had success using them in the tests, always brilliant to hear from you in the comments as well. It keeps me motivated. Uh, well, I've had a plan that I might start to try and do, try and do a video fairly regularly. It might be some test routes that I've done in the past, but of course, even if you drove the same test route five times in a row, you're going to get different situations that will pop up. And I suppose unless we actually go and do it, we won't, uh, yeah, we can, it says great, if we go and do it, well, we should get the scenarios which should help with your learning. Most of the things, as you've probably seen, are just a case of check your mirror, decide if you're going to need to take action. Maybe you have to slow down, maybe you have to stop, but just trying to be organized. As long as you're doing that, then yeah, you shouldn't have a problem. Best of luck on the day. Until the next time, I'll see you soon.